Welcome. Let us learn management of a posterior capsular rind. My trainee was trying to hold this hemineucleus after dividing the nucleus into two halves. That is, he was trying stop and chop technique. But there is a hole in the posterior capsule as he tries to hold this hemineucleus. And I take up this case. I suspected a posterior capsular rind and we will find, we will see soon that it happened. So what I do is I inject visco, use a hook to bring the pieces in the anterior chamber and at this time I was not, I was not sure whether there is rain or not. So after bringing the pieces in the anterior chamber I decreased the bottle height and tried to emulsify these pieces, tried to take out these pieces. And here it goes. I could bring the pieces and now as I try to here yeah, the opening tends to enlarge and I know that there is a rent. So I ask for viscoat and use viscoat to plug this opening. Viscoat is from Alcon and it can nicely plug small holes. And now I take hooks to mobilize the other hemineucleus and bring it out of the bag divide it into two pieces inject viscoat again behind these two pieces and decrease the bottle height and emulsify these two pieces here it goes at this time the flow rate is 30 vacuum is 300 and bottle height is about 60 centimeters and I find that it is fallibility is very less so increase the flow rate to about 35 and remove these pieces There is no vitreous in the entry chamber at this moment. And now I try to mobilize the epinuclear shell. Taking care not to attract vitreous. And here I can make out that some vitreous strands has come in the aspiration port. So I stand there still. Take a hook. Take my small chopper. Go through the side port and pull those strands out. Inject viscoat again. And now I use the Simco cannula, 23G Simco, to remove these cortex. Cortex from 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Uh, nicely removed and now I use viscoat again to keep the vitreous strands at bay and now I go through the side port with the 23G Simco go through the right side port and remove this thick 
cortex and epinucleus from the subincisional area. Now the cortex from 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock this is the trickiest part because the rent is there right there so what I do is I can find a strand coming here hooking the posterior capsule I took a venous scissor and cut this strand and I can find that the posterior capsule is going to its own place and now I take the Simco remove the cortex try to remove and I find that the vitreous is coming to the tending to come to the aspiration port so inject visco again nicely stop the irrigation of the Simco and do dry aspiration of this cortex because weight aspiration normal aspiration is very tricky here I can cause a retinal tear drawing vitreous strands vigorously so this was dry aspiration of the cortex and now there is another vitreous strand which is hooking the posterior capsule here I took the vana scissor again and cut it then I use the vitrectomy cutter go in the antivitreous and do nice vitrectomy and in this process whatever viscoat went into vitreous cavity is also coming out a nice antivitrectomy adequate antivitrectomy should be done there should not be any vitreous strand in the entry chamber all the vitreous strands from the entry chamber should go back to anterior vitreous the cutter should be good if the cutter doesn't cut and only aspirates then also it is dangerous it can cause a peripheral retinal tear so the cutter should be good bottle height should be about 60 to 70 centimeter cutting rate is about 3000 this is Faros from Oatley, Switzerland. A nice vitrectomy is done. Then I inject air. I enlarge the main wound which has not been shown in the in this edited video now I inject the intraocular lens over the iris I don't try to place it in the sulcus go and place it over the iris push the lens in the entry chamber this is a hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens Hydrophilic lenses are well tolerated in the sulcus. And now I take the Simco cannula, aspirate the air, 
and by the Simco cannula I'm placing the lens in the sulcus. There is irrigation, keeps the antechamber nicely formed and the haptics are over the anterior capsular rim, nicely placed in the sulcus. Now I inject air again and inject pilocarpine to constrict the pupil. My plan is to constrict the pupil and to do a peripheral aridectomy by the vitrectomy cutter at 12 o'clock. But here I find some vitreous strands here. I take a vana scissor and cut these strands. Anyway, all the vitreous strands will be taken care of after injecting kenacord. And now I put a suture here at the side port. Whenever we suspect that there may be leakage of fluid in such cases, in posterior capsular range cases, we should put a suture. So this is the suture placed at the side port at 2 o'clock and the knot is buried in the sclera. Put another suture at the main wound at around 11 o'clock. But before tying the knot, I have to do some more work. I aspirate the air and find that the people has not constricted well. So what I do is I take the rexis forceps that is uh, utrita forceps and push the iris, pull the iris there, make some space and now I put the irrigation through 8 o'clock side port. This is by the left hand and by the right hand I do a small aridectomy at 12 o'clock. This aridectomy is not necessary if we could place a sensor multipiece intraocular lens but it is better to do a aridectomy if we place a hydrophilic lens in the sulcus. And now I injected kinacord and I find that there are vitreous strands at 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock. So I have to take care of these vitreous strands. And so I use irrigation through the 8 o'clock side port and I use the cutter through the main wound. Yes, on can do all these and shoot all this through the side ports, but I take care of the antechamber depth. I lift off the anterior wall of the main wound and maintain the depth of the anterior chamber. But I suggest that. You can do all these works through these side ports. Yes, vitreous strands have been taken care of very nicely. Inject air. And now the this is moxifloxacin. And now the main wound is closed by placing the knot. This suture should be just to oppose the edges of the wound 
should not be very tight and the knot is buried in the sclera or cornea and this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber the anterior chamber is formed very nicely and the case is concluded these are some post-op pictures after one week. The cornea is clear, antechamber is quiet, unaided visual acuity is 6 by 18 and with optical correction it is 6 by 9. And the patient is, doesn't have any complaints. The lens is nicely placed in the sulcus, 90D picture shows a very good optic nerve head. Uh, macula is okay but there is a tributary vein occlusion. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in managing your posterior capsular hint cases.